All right, so Austin, I was doing some figuring the other day. Right. Um, we've known each other for 35 years. Can you believe okay. that? Okay. Yes. And we had some wild... Seems like 50 or 60 <laughs> at least. And we had some wild and crazy times. And I know uh -huh. with most people that might mean prostitutes and drugs and uh -huh. alcohol. <laughs> no. Other wild times involve water balloons and uh -huh. bottle rockets uh -huh. and yeah. things like that. Right. So, uh, and that's what, geeks, that's what geeks do. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and some fast cars. So anyway, um, we've known each other for a long time. We're here at X-Force PC. We live in the same town. That's how the relationship kind of got started with X-Force PC. So, yep. Um, and of course, at X-Force PC, we build you know, computers for X-Plane. Yep. So we got a few questions for you. Okay. Um, what's in store for 1050? Okay, so for 1050, we have a whole new range of airplanes that are parked at the airport. And that may sound boring, but I don't find it quite so boring, and here's why. One of the problems with X-Plane airports have been they're like these fast, just empty kind of tarmacs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's boring. And so then we brought an artist and uh, something called the Airport Scenery Gateway, where any customer can create custom airports using World Editor. Mm -hmm. And then they can submit that custom airport to the airport scenery gateway. We have about 3,000 airports in X-Plane right now that have 3D buildings. They're the same as the, the 3D buildings of the real airport because customers use World Editor that submit the airport to the airport scenery gateway and then their 3D airport with realistic buildings becomes part of the simulator. We've got about 3,000 of them so far. Wow. Now the problem with these custom airports though is the ramps look kind of deserted. You know, you have all these buildings, but where's the airplanes? And then sometimes the artist that makes the airport will they'll build the uh, airplane right into the part, of, you know, as the scenery. Mm -hmm. But it's the same airplane every time. It's fake, you know, you go there and it's the same airplane every time. So now what we're doing is we're building a technology where airplanes are randomly parked all over the airport, but it's always a type of airplane that is realistic for the parking spot that you've got. Right. You see, so you go back and there'll be airliners in the airliner spots, light airplanes in the light airplane spots. There'll be a different airplane every time, but it'll always be one that's feasible. And so now airports and X-Plane are really starting to look realistic and varied, uh, like you'd see at the real field. Different every so, time you show up. So someone watching this, if they say, oh, I want to model my airport and get it into x where, where do they go? So uh, at xplane.com uh, is basically where you get x -plane, but there's something called World Edit. And just Google World Edit for x -plane and you'll find the link. I'm not going to try and like, list the link. It's okay. a copy. But Google World Edit for x -plane, and Google Airport Scenery Gateway for x -plane. Airport Scenery Gateway. If people start using those, then we can have even more than the 3,000 airports we've got so far. Good. Okay. Well, my Oculus is going to be here in probably, I don't know, six weeks or so. And how long have you been saying that the Oculus is six weeks away? <laughs> a year? I've been saying it's six months away for a while, but oh, I actually good. have a pre-order in, and uh, in theory it's supposed to be here, yeah, in about uh, six weeks. Right. My question is, okay, x is going to support it, but when I, let's say I receive it in six weeks. Uh -huh. Is it going to be awesome, or is it going to be like, oh, it's kind of sucky, and i got to wait, and then this guy's going to update it some more. Neither. It's kind of buggy. Neither. It won't be perfect, and it also won't be kind of lame, because we're not supporting it right away. Here's what happened. When the Oculus One development kit came out, we supported it in-house. It was great. Then Oculus switched to version 2, and they threw away all of the interfaces for version oh, 1. Wow. We had to start over from scratch. We did it. Then they came out with DK3, Development Kit 3. They threw away all the work for version 2. At this point, we said, forget it. We're not going to keep supporting the Oculus Rift, only to have all of our work thrown out the window later. So we're going to actually wait this time until the Oculus Rift, we think they're final. And of course, they better work on Mac and Windows, preferably Linux as well, but certainly Mac oh, and Windows. Oh, well, that brings up another question. Yeah. You know, the Oculus, the guy that started, I don't know if he for, started Oculus or started the whole virtual reality movement, but he came out the other day and said, there's not a single Mac that supports Oculus. Not Perfectly. a single Mac. And he, said, and he said, basically, if you use a Mac, forget having Oculus. So now, we know the reason for that is, there's not a single Mac that has a gaming desktop graphics card. Mm -hmm. The only thing close is um, the some of the iMacs have 9850Ms, or okay. either they have the mobile version of the ATI, Radeon, okay. 
but there isn't a single Mac with a desktop graphics card. What's mm -hmm. your reaction to that? I mean, what? Do you okay. Think? So first of all, I'm, I'm sure if that's what he says, that's what that's true because he knows the hardware requirements for the Oculus better than I do. But um, we do absolutely want Oculus Mac support. We probably will be willing to release it for Windows only. If they have Windows support that's solid, I'm not going to literally stop Oculus support from going to everybody just because the Mac hardware isn't uh, appropriate for their uh, headset. Yeah. But um, we are not going to support it the moment it comes out because we're going to wait to see, having already been burned about twice on this, we're going to wait to see that their hardware is more or less final and their software to interface with it is more or less final before we go through this for the third time and getting to support it. But I will say this, mm -hmm. having used Oculus uh, DK1 and DK2 and x myself in our R&D labs, it's freaking amazing. It I is an it amazing. Be, yeah. I, I was inside the Cessna 172 cockpit with the Oculus Rift and I was trying to reach out the window to feel the wind coming by in flight, and I started to reach over and grab the map out of the uh, co-pilot seat. Yeah. And I was looking behind me, wondering who was basically in the airplane with me. It's yeah. incredible. That's it what I'm incredible. looking forward to. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing. I will say that. It's amazing. All right. Well, I'm rough ready. Yeah. All right. So, um, sometime last year, you told me that version 11 was targeted for late 2016, and I believe my reaction was yeah, it's, I don't know what extreme I laughter. Yeah, right. <laughs> so there's no chance of that, right? This year, version 11. Uh, let's put it this way. I'm not sure yet. Okay. That is something that um, is still pretty far down the pipe. We are working on 1050 right now and getting the uh, airplanes to be all you know placed at the airport and just tons and tons and tons of other stuff. Better air traffic control, better artificial intelligence for the airplanes. So when you're flying the ATC in X-Plane 1050, it's going to be better. The aircraft that are following the instructions of ATC, they fly more realistically, taxi and take off more realistically for a more uh, dynamic, realistic airport environment. So um, don't know about 11 yet. But uh, we are right now cranking on 1050, and 1050 is turning out to be pretty darn awesome. And we're optimizing the frame rate too. Yeah, I was about awesome. to that was my next question. So one thing you mentioned, you know, one of the things that's been a little bit of an issue with version 10 is consistent frame rate. It's mm -hmm. been kind of you yeah. know, up and down, with little, yeah. maybe some little pauses here yeah. and there. Yeah. And so that's still on track for 1050, those optimizations to smooth oh, yeah. the frame rate out. Oh, yeah, we're already doing it. And um, the degree to which we make it impossible to ever see a pause in X-Plane is still unknown. But right. we're, we're pulling the pauses out. And just between 1045 and 1050, as you'll be seeing fairly soon, we've gotten some of the pauses out for some customers uh, enough to notice. That doesn't mean all of them, but we we're certainly want it to be absolutely rock solid from a frame rate standpoint. All right, let's move over to your patent uh, infringement lawsuit. Infringement. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you Disaster. Want to call it. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Right. But the, the specifically the documentary you're working on. So right. so far it's been a series of um, YouTube videos that I've yeah. seen. Yeah, at least a few videos. Is that what it's gonna be? Or oh, is it all no. gonna be put together in something oh, that no. can actually be released on oh, Netflix? Man. Oh no. We are making an hour and a half long full documentary called The Patent Scan. And we have most, probably about 85 or 90% of the footage in the can. And I am headed out to Hollywood at the end of this month for a week with full, I'm not kidding, sets, actors. There's the actors that I'm working with. Wow. Camera, lighting, the whole nine yards. And um, literally, we have the interview footage in the can. We're doing the Hollywood footage at the end of this month. And it's going to be a full hour and a half documentary. To, to unveil what an absolute, just absurd disaster the patent system actually is. So something nobody knows about. And nobody understands, nobody knows how much it affects them. Well, yeah, one of the things you mentioned to me was, you know, Amazon got a patent for taking a picture of an object against a white background. Yep, they did. You know what? I think we're violating Yeah, we're violating the patent right now. We're, we've got a yeah. white background. Yeah, we got a white background and we're in front of it. Yeah, and we're kind of showing a product here as well. Yeah. So, yeah, we're pretty seriously violating, violating the patent. Yeah. Amazon's patent. Yeah, there's also a patent for swinging on a swing sideways. There's a patent for making a stick that a dog can fetch. There's a patent for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
uh, that was filed by the Crustables uh, company, I think that's what they're called. I've actually bought those before. They're like frozen yeah. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah, they're patented. So if anybody else tries to compete with them, they say, oh no, we're the first people to think of putting peanut butter and jelly inside of two pieces of bread sealed around the edge. You know, they're having meat pies back in like Victorian times like that, you know, like the chicken pot pie. And these people, they say, they, they, they think, well, we'll just take out a patent on it. And sure enough, they did, and it was approved. And now if anybody tries to compete with them, they can expect to be sued for it. Now, what is the patent system doing there? Is it helping innovation, or is it just saying, I'm going to sue anybody that does something I don't want them to do? Yeah, I mean, my wife's violating that patent probably one, at least once a week. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. It's much worse than you think. Well, maybe, I think I'm to the end of my question. Oh, well, yeah, I do have one more. So, in this documentary, do you have any fear of repercussions? Because here's the thing with these patent trolls. <laughs> They're all lawyers, so it doesn't oh, yeah. cost them anything to, to right. prosecute these cases. Right. They come after you. You're yeah. not a lawyer, yeah. so you've got to go hire a lawyer. That's it. You have costs. You're understanding the and scale. The, and the, and the, the patent troll is a lawyer. He That's has right. no cost. He That's is correct. a lawyer. That's so right. do you fear that they're just going to go just throw hundreds of lawsuits at you just to like try to bankrupt you or Maybe. You know, for right, doing so this film? Sure. Oh, they may. I mean, sure, I kind of fear that, but notice how you said kind of, and here's why I only kind of fear it. What I've decided is I have two options. I can let them continue to do this to me secretly without anyone finding out, or I can go public and expose it. I choose the second one, and if the second one includes being sued a hundred more times or being driven into bankruptcy or something else, well, I'd still rather do that then continue to have them suing me in private while they turn to the world and say, we're protecting innovation, while what they're actually doing is suing people that innovate right. under the cover so that anybody finding out. Well, they're lawyers. They haven't created anything but That's a correct. piece of paper. That's correct. All they, do is they, all they do is they buy a patent from a bankruptcy proceeding when a company goes bankrupt, and then they find everybody that's doing what they claim is written on that little piece of paper that the government gave mm -hmm. them, and now they can sue anyone for anything. And it costs about $3 million. And the vaguer the patent, the better. The better it is, because then it applies to anything. Right. And so um, the patent I'm being sued on uh, basically describes looking up a name on a list to see if you paid for something. And because of that, they're suing me for using the Google Play Store. Because the Google Play Store looks a name up on a list to see if the customer paid for the app he's running. And it costs about $3 million to defend yourself against one of these suits. And the lawyers told me, they said, you know, Austin, we'll let the case go away if you just give us $50,000 in cash. Well, and that's a, what probably 90% of the time happens. 97% of the time. 97% of the time. People say, all right, I'll give you $50,000 in cash to go away so I don't have to pay $3 million to prove that you're wrong. But what happens if there's a different patent troll that comes after that same company for a different vague patent. It's the same the thing again, right? Another, oh, yeah. Another $50,000. Right. right. So what people find is when they give the patent troll the $50,000, it causes more patent trolls to come afterwards. So settling one time causes them to come again and again and again. And they've seen you haven't settled, so the thought is hopefully they won't. And I haven't had another one since. And you never intend to settle. I, just I never will me. settle one, and that's why I don't think they're going to keep coming after me. It's not profitable. I'm not the easy payout. All right. Well, this is all, these are all the questions I have. Anything you want to say to the X-Plane world out there? Yeah, go to the patentscam.com. I start to lay all the stuff out. Patentscam.com. Right. The patentscam.com. The patentscam.com. Yep. And your YouTube channel has a few things on it. Is it Austin at X-Plane.com, your YouTube channel? Oh, I can't even remember. But you have one. Google Austin Meyer YouTube videos. You'll find it. All right, cool. Thanks all for right. your time. No problem. All right. Bye.